Welcome back to Behind the Box. Today, we're going to take a look at great games that you can play this holiday season with your friends and family. So, we've got games here that are very quick to play, really easy to learn, and they play large player counts as well. So we'll start our list off with Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. So this can play 4 to 12 players, and it takes about a half an hour to play. So it's a deduction game where one of you is going to be a murderer, and the other will be a forensic scientist. Now, before a play begins, the murderer, in secret, will tell the forensic scientist two cards that are evidence that lead back to them being the murderer. Then it's the forensic scientist's job for the rest of the game to guide the rest of the players back to who the actual murderer is using those two evidence cards to help him. Now, the trick is <laughs> the forensic scientist can't speak. So the only way to communicate is by giving these clues using these little cards in front with words on them um, categories such as what time of day the murder took place or the expression on the victim's face, that sort of thing. And it's, it's quite a fun game. Yes. It really is. Um, I, I like the little chore that you have as the forensic scientist to sort of piece together a strange murder from an egg and a hole in the <laughs> ground and try and from that figure out what time of day the murder took place. I don't know, breakfast? <laughs> or where the murder happened? Construction site? I don't know, hole it, in the ground? <laughs> yeah, it really is great because the forensic scientists, they need to basically plan out this murder themselves to make it logical to the clues that they've got to give. So that's really funny. Mm -hmm. And you sort of like, it makes sense at the end of it all. It's also a really great, despite its name, Deception, it's a really great game for people that don't like to deceive or have to lie or be aggressive towards each other because... If you're the murderer and you're not comfortable doing that, once you've given your pieces of evidence to the forensic scientist as your clues, for the rest of the game, you can just play as though you aren't the murderer. Yeah. Because, yeah, I might have chosen egg, the forensic scientist might have chosen breakfast, and people might be pointing at me and going, well, eggs, you have eggs at breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you can look around everyone else's cards, and there's a lot of overlap with things. And so I might go, okay, that's true, I have an egg, but this player has a frying pan, and this player's got a pig. And so you can kind of start pointing fingers elsewhere instead of just being aggressive and just disagreeing. Mm -hmm. You can go, that's true, it, that, I have an egg, <laughs> that is a breakfast <laughs> item, but other people also have these things. Yeah. So it's a really good game for people that aren't comfortable with that aggression that comes with a lot of other games like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, second game, we might get a bit of flack <laughs> for this one, but <clears throat> it's Zombie Dice. Now, Zombie Dice is a uh, game that's push your luck dice rolling game. You draw three dice at a time, you roll them. If you roll any brains, you can score those as points. If you roll any feet, you have to re-roll that dice. But if you score any shots, then that's like a negative health to you. So if you ever get three shots, you're out of the round and you don't get to score your brains as points, but you can choose to stop at any time and score whatever brains you've got. You pack everything back into the cup, pass it to the left, and it just continues until someone gets 13 points. This game, I know it's not a great game. I'm not here to tell you <laughs> this not, is a good game. Yeah, it's game. not the world's best dice game or anything. No, it's not. But <laughs> it's fun. And when you're playing with people that don't typically play games, this is the sort of thing they're looking for. It's really quick. It can play pretty much any play account. Mm -hmm. You just keep track on a piece of paper. And people will just have fun because you'll roll dice and you'll you'll have that one player that's like, I'm going to shoot the moon. I'm going to just go for it. <laughs> and they'll get zero points at the end of it all. But then you'll also have it where the game's coming to an end and you've got another player that's only got a couple of points and they just go on this miracle run because it's all <laughs> random. It's dice. You don't have any control over it. You can just choose when to stop. And so, yeah, it's just fun. And we yeah. still have family and friends that years after we played this with them have spoken to me about it and gone, where did you get that zombie game? And when are you going to bring it back around again? And when are we going to play it? Because it's just enjoyable for people that don't typically play games to just have that yeah. bit of excitement and it's a nice little filler you know yeah while you're waiting for dessert to be ready or something you can just pull it out you don't need much you could even like just do it yeah. on, on a book or on a coffee table or just a hard floor yeah we, you don't need to sit around the table we have played it where everyone's just been sat around and we've pulled it out and gone would anybody like to try a, a board game you know a, a, a new thing that you've not experienced mm -hmm. before and they can just stay sitting on a couch and just roll it on the seat next to them so, yeah, it works just really easily for people that wouldn't otherwise be up for mm -hmm. doing something. 
So great. Yeah, try it out. I don't think you'll regret it if you've got the right group like that. And it's cheap, so it's yeah. not really a dangerous thing to go for. No. Our next pick is When I Dream. This is uh, very new to our collection, but it's already super beloved. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's terrific. It's a party game. It's for four to ten players. Takes around a half an hour to play. Essentially, one of you is going to be a dreamer. And the dreamer spends the game blindfolded um, while everyone else can see a card that's out in front of them with a word on it. Now, the dreamer needs help to interpret this dream, and they're trying to guess that word that's on the card. The rest of the people are helping to interpret the dream, or not helping, <laughs> depending on the role that they have. So there's a role called the fairy that some of the people around there will be, and those are the people actually trying to help pick that word so they'll give a clue word to co kind of guide the dreamer to um the others might be a boogeyman and they're not trying to help and they're giving clues to mislead the dreamer or you could be the sandman who kind of just wants things to be balanced so mm -hmm. they want an equal amount of um correct guesses and an equal amount of poor guesses and that's that's just your game right there that's essentially it um it's 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 a great time yeah it always gets replayed because folks want a chance to be the dreamer yeah it's another one of those games similar to deception where everyone wants to try each of the roles it's mm -hmm. not like spyfall where you don't want to be the spy mm -hmm. it you want to try it out and see can you do better than your friends yeah I've, i haven't been the boogeyman yet i, I bet i'll do it yeah and it's also <laughs> beautiful like the components and all the bits in the box mm -hmm. and even the card so it uses sort of a dixit style card so it's a big tarot card with a beautiful illustration and it, on the top will say for example hunter and then on the bottom it will say pacifier now instead of just having a, a hunter in the top half and then a pacifier in the bottom half it's a big portrait <laughs> that combines them. So it's a guy hunting pacifiers. <laughs> All the art does this, and it's something that people are going to talk about and be like, this is really good looking yeah, stuff. Yeah, it is memorable. And it actually comes with a uh, a blindfold that is <laughs> themed around the game yeah, as well. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I will say, though, it's quite small and tight. So if you have a larger head, I would recommend <laughs> getting, um, getting another one of these. I nicked this from uh, Delta Airlines. So, <laughs> thank you, Delta. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored by Delta Airlines. <laughs> but, yeah, honestly, any of these games, playing over this holiday season would be great. You'll have a lot of fun. Your family will talk about them and want to play them for years to come. Mm -hmm. And if you have a game that you play with your family or that you're planning on playing this year, let us know in the comments down below. And if you want more information on these, again, there'll be uh, links in the description as well as links to our social media. But until the next one, we'll see you soon. Bye. Happy holidays. Blech. All, All right. right, sorry about that. That was a good intro, too. I know. That was really good. There were times where I, like, thought I was tripping up. I felt it, and that's why I do my thing where I look at you, and I'm like, you got this clean. In my head, I'm like, go <laughs>